So hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be ranking language apps because I have tried to learn over like 10 languages and I feel like I have so much experience with so many of these apps. So I feel like I can speak on this. Personally, I'm trilingual. I'm not like a polyglot that speaks seven languages, but I am a beginner in so many languages because I get in phases. So I feel like I have tried out like most of these apps pretty well. I'm going to start with ranking them because there's quite a lot to get through. So the first app we have is Anki. I feel like honestly Anki is not the most famous app in the language learning community because it's very very not user friendly basically like you have to learn how to use the app like you have to actively watch tutorials on how to use it properly so if this was like my personal personal tier of like my personal apps that i use the most it would be on the s tier for sure but because i agree it is really hard to use i think i'm gonna put it here because honestly i'm i know i'm biased but it's amazing it's just really hard but like once you learn it the next app we have is Babbel, which is actually perfect because the first point that i was going to mention about Babbel is i think it's extremely similar to busu and busu is straight after it honestly i quite prefer busu just a little bit first of all i think the user interface is nicer it's a little bit more fun to be on the app second of all i feel like busu focuses more on like actual phrases also one reason that i personally prefer busu to Babbel is that it has this like social setting where like you can write like a paragraph on something and then people who speak that language and it's their first language they can correct you and comment and help you one thing that i don't love about both of them is that they both have this like rosetta stone way of learning vocab like every vocab word is associated to a stock image which i just don't love so what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put busu here and i'm gonna put Babbel one lower i'm so sorry Babbel. I love like in general Babel is good, but we're comparing here. <laughs> so the next app is Close Master. I honestly really like Close Master. I think it's really good for like intermediate slash advanced learners because it has a lot of vocab that's really random, but like random in a way that you would still use it, not like random vocab that you would never use. Like it's still very useful. And what I like is that it's normal sentences that you would actually hear. The only thing is that I feel like it's very not beginner friendly. Like if you start learning a language from scratch you're not getting a grammar lesson you're not getting like a vocab explanation of like the gender of the noun you're not really going to be getting any of that for intermediate slash advanced i really think it's really good so i think i'm gonna put it up here it's not an s tier because it doesn't cover everything not that any app covers everything but i still feel like it lacks a little bit of structure just a, just a little bit so the next app we have is drops drops actually really surprised me because the last time i used drops was when it came out initially in like 2015 and when it initially came out i really really didn't like it but because i knew i was filming this video i went back and i used it again because obviously the last time i used it was about seven years ago and honestly i kind of love it right now so okay i made a little list of the four pros and one con that i found about this app when i was using Using it number one they have 46 languages which is insane and the thing is i think each language even though it's not like a lot a lot of vocab for each language it's still well made i started a course on sanskrit for yoga poses which is insane i've never seen that anywhere it's very original i liked how specific the word lists were so like when i was checking out the app it was the first of june and i'm pretty sure this is for the whole of june but obviously june is pride month and right now they have like all of these vocab lists for pride month and i think that's so original so cool i love that they're doing that and the next pro this is actually one of my favorite pros not many apps here have this at all but basically if you already know the word you can just swipe up and get rid of it and never see it again which is amazing in my opinion because a lot of these apps like for example if you're an intermediate learner and you want to start using an app sometimes you can't really skip through lessons like sometimes you have to complete them all and then you're just repeating stuff you already know so i think i'm gonna put drops in a honestly this is like hard to rank because basically drops like i don't think it compares in the amount of vocab it has to close master like close master has a lot more but the original ideas out of drops i have not seen in many of these apps and i feel like that makes it stand out a little bit so i feel like a is a good place for it the next app we have is everybody's favorite duolingo honestly duolingo gets a lot of hate but like it's a great app and there's a reason it's one of the top language learning apps i feel like it gets a lot of 
with hate because it's really repetitive and it is very weird like with their sentences like i don't know what's going on but at the end of the day i feel like any language app will get repetitive like i have never seen an app that doesn't get repetitive and that's why you use a combination of them i think if you're learning like the really common languages that are learned on duolingo like spanish french german you're getting incredible courses especially with the whole stories thing they even have podcasts now i think they do really well the only thing i would say though is i feel like with the amount of time that they've been really popular for and the amount of money they must get they have had more room for growth but i feel like they almost like haven't taken it like there's always possibility to do more honestly i really like the idea of using lingots to buy more like specific lessons and i don't know why they haven't expanded on that because i feel like nobody cares to use their lingots to buy their owl an outfit so i'm gonna put them in b because i feel like they're an essential but like they've had the opportunity to grow but they haven't taken it the next app we have is high native so i don't know if a lot of people use high native basically high native is a place where you can ask people questions about their native language i feel like it's lacking a lot though it doesn't provide as much and they have not changed the app in years as far as i know so i'm gonna put them here okay so the next app is hello talk and i actually want to do tandem at the same time because they're kind of in the same category so basically hello talk and tandem are both kind of like language exchange apps hello talk is good i like that they have kind of like a feed like you can just post about your day and people will just like interact or correct you i like the correction feature they have it's actually really cool the only thing is that there's been a lot of cases where people try to like find people to date on there like they use it as a dating app personally i would put it here maybe that's mean maybe i should put it here no i'm gonna keep it out of seat i'm so sorry um <laughs> anyway moving on like i said tandem is very similar it's a language exchange app the one pro and con about it is that basically i feel like the language exchange partners are a little bit more serious on there because in order to get into the app you kind of have to like send in like an application it's not really an application it's kind of like you your profile and then they have to manually accept you but i'm honestly putting that as a really big con i completely get where they're going with it because it ensures that you're going to find like an actual good language exchange partner which you might have for a while but i feel like it just prevents a lot of people from using it like this is like the harshest ranking i'll have on this video the most unfair one because to be fair i haven't used the app but i don't hear that many amazing reviews about it i don't think it's like that amazing and plus it has that huge barrier in the beginning so the next app is italki personally straight away i'm putting italki in s tier because i think italki is honestly amazing it has so many teachers on there if you are actually serious about learning a language and you have the funds to pay for a teacher i think it's amazing it's a lot cheaper than any normal class that you would get because like first of all you can get kind of like trial lessons with a lot of teachers and those literally sometimes cost like three euro per an hour which is amazing and then once you find your teacher there's a lot of different prices so if you're trying to save money you still have a lot of options on there also one feature i really like is that when you're choosing a language you want to learn you can choose where that person is from so for example if you're learning a language like spanish spanish has a lot of accents and it doesn't really matter which accent you learn but at the end of the day you're learning a language to speak it with people so if you're going to be in a specific country you're going to want to learn the accent and the slang words of that country so i really like that option honestly i don't have anything more to say italki s tier i love italki the next app is language transfer this could be a controversial opinion i watched a few people talk about this app and honestly so many people were saying that it is like amazing like number one so good i don't get the hype though low-key because honestly the lessons themselves are really good like they're really really good but first of all the app is not much of an app at all it's literally like you open the app and it's just like the audio files like it's just basically like the content is s tier but the app itself is not s tier so personally i'm gonna put it in b because the content itself is really good but it's just it's not really much of an app so the next app is lingo dear in my head i always associate this app as duolingo 
but for Asian languages because this app is so similar to Duolingo. I feel like they could have made some updates to make them seem a little bit different, but they are quite similar to Duolingo in my opinion. I'm gonna put it here because to me, it's the same as Duolingo, but just essentially has less languages well made. The next app is Lingopi. I actually use Lingopi more on web. I don't really use it on my phone, but Lingopi is quite new, I think, but I honestly really, really like Lingopi. Pie. If any of you guys haven't heard of it, it's basically like if you want to watch a show, it basically is a way to learn a language through shows. So for example, you can like choose like a short film to watch or something on Lingo Pie, whatever they have in their, I don't know what you call it, library database. And that show will have like all the subtitles, but you can click on the vocabulary and it's going to save it into like a vocabulary list, which honestly I really like. It's simple, but it's to the point, like it's effective, which is what I like. Honestly, I would put Lingo Pie here here because it's something that you would actually use like it's something that is fun to use because you're watching something at the same time personally i would put it in a i really like it so yeah so the next app we have is ling i don't know if this is a new app but i have never heard of it until like two weeks ago honestly there is so many languages on there which is amazing but at the same time it kind of makes me doubt how well it's actually made because it's not a huge app as far as i know like i don't think they have like this huge budget also they have like a voice recognition thing and like basically like you would have to like say a sentence and then they would say how well you said it and to test this out i kept saying stuff like wrong on purpose and they kept putting it as correct i would personally put it in d because it just feels new it just feels incomplete it feels rushed with the amount of languages the next app we have is link q honestly i think this is one of the only apps that i can say that i really just didn't like using like it just was so confusing i didn't like the interface i don't really know how to explain it because I couldn't even last a long time on there. It was so confusing. I'm gonna put it in D, but maybe I just am being harsh on it because I didn't try it. So the next app is Lingvist. This surprised me so much. I honestly really liked it. I feel like it's really good for intermediate people. I think it's really good for beginners as well, but what I really liked about it, which drops hat as well, but basically there's an option to say that you already know a word and I really like that. Second of all, you learn words through sentences in context like clothes master. But the thing that Clothes Master doesn't have that Lingvist does have is basically like under every single word, it says the grammatical explanation of what the word is. Like, is it a noun? Is it an adverb? Is it a whatever other words there are? And another thing that I really like is that if you wrote a synonym of that word, then it like doesn't mark you wrong. Like it tells you to try again and it gives you the first letter of the word because it knows that technically you're correct, but it's just not the exact same word used in that sentence and i really like that like that's really smart another amazing thing which i don't think any of these apps have had so far that i've mentioned you can add your own words you can make your own decks and another really cool thing is that they have an actual grammar section where it's kind of like little chapters of a book where it's like if you just want to see like quick note on how to use the present subjunctive in spanish like it has like a whole page for it so i really think like this is the most well-rounded app so honestly i'm gonna put lingvist in s tier i really liked my experience with it so the next app we have is lyrica i believe this was also a moderately new app because when i started using it it was only three languages but it honestly is a really fun app if you have not heard of it it basically is a way to like learn the language through songs and it's actually like a fun way like obviously it's not an app that you would use on its own but it's an app that like you would want to use because it's fun like you're listening to music you're understanding the context of the song that you might have been listening to anyway the one thing that i would actually put it as a con is that it's not meant to be used as a free app it's not something like duolingo where you can completely use it for free and then just add like add-ons to pay like no like you are meant to pay for the app like it will give you like two or three lessons for free but after that you have to pay i would place it in c it's good it's fun but it's just not much for paying for it the next app is memorize i'm very biased towards memorize because memorize basically started my whole journey with spanish Spanish and Spanish is like my most advanced language that I learned from scratch. So I really personally love Memorize. I do think it's very repetitive. So unless you are biased and just love it from the beginning, like it is a little bit repetitive, but I really like the vocab. I feel like they give it to you in like a good order. Like you do get some random words here and there, but like everything is pretty useful. Also, I like that it's not just languages. So if you want to learn some random facts about anything, you can do that. I think you do have to go on the website though not on the app. And also,
also i like this is a thing that other apps haven't had apart from anki is you can use other people's decks so people can make a deck for like another language that's maybe not so common that maybe memorize doesn't have a course for i would personally put it in a i feel like it's one of the best vocabulary apps the next app we have is mondly this app really surprised me because i have never heard of it but apparently like i've heard from someone that it has a lot of money and it has a shitload of reviews so i don't know who's using this app i have never heard of it in my life i tried it out though and i really didn't get the hype i feel like it was really like expensive and it just reminded me of a mixture of like duolingo and rosetta stone the whole matching of vocab word to an image it was really rosetta stone for me so i don't know once again like i really am happy to pay for a good product but when a product is like just as good as another product that's already available and free it doesn't really give you an incentive to use it like it's just like you might as well use duolingo so personally i'm gonna put it in d but i apparently it has some fans it has a lot of reviews so i could be wrong so our last app is pimsler and honestly i'm a very big pimsler lover like i really like pimsler i think it's really well done it's kind of audio lessons the audio lessons are really well made like they're very high quality they're very interactive personally like if you ask me i prefer the audio lessons themselves a lot more than language transfer and it actually has a good like app interface so personally i would put it in s tier i really 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 like pimsleur so that is it for the apps this is just my ranking so let me know what you guys think this is not like an objective answer of like which app is better this is just like my opinion of what i've tried and what i've liked and what i haven't liked once again reminding you there is not an app that you can use on its own and i would never recommend that i don't think you should use an app like one app i honestly feel like you should use a combination of them because one app will have something that another app won't personally for me like if i use everything in s tier and a tier i'm happy like they're my top top apps and yeah i hope you guys enjoy this video please let me know your opinions i'm actually really curious about like which apps you use more what ranking would you disagree with here what ranking do you agree with and yeah i'll see you guys next time peace out love you all Thank you.